Here's Brody Brazil. The story I'm about to share with you is unfortunately completely real. Now, it happened about two years ago, so obviously since then, everything has been taken care of. It's been fully resolved, at least logistically. But mentally and emotionally for me, no. I'm still not over it. Frustrated with what happened, how it happened, and how it kind of didn't get taken care of. What happened? A huge chunk of our tile roof here at home just flat out fell off one April day. It was a bit windy, and to prove it, well, I actually have the video footage. It was actually Easter Sunday, and as you can see here, leaves and flowers already blowing. Keep your eye, though, on that elevated patio area. That's eventually where you're going to at least see the damage on the ground, and all of a sudden, it goes from windy to looking like right here. Is there a helicopter landing on top of our house? And there was the spill right there. It's hard to see a little bit in the shadows, but a handful of those tiles, those very jagged and heavy tiles, came crashing down. This is a look at the aftermath from the next day. You can kind of see that pattern up there of where they fell, the damage. I mean, look how far some of those pieces actually came, and look how sharp some of those edges were. Again, this was on a typical Sunday. My son and my wife are typically out in the backyard playing around. What if some of these hit a person? Little bit of a closer up view from the roof. You can see some more damaged tiles, not just to those ones that slipped and fell, but ones even farther down. Also, look at that vent, how it got bonked on the way down. And there you see just pieces waiting to fall. Fortunately, I got up there, took care of everything else before anything bad happened. So not only am I a geek for obviously having that security camera footage, by the way, just one of several cameras out in the backyard, but we also have an anemometer in our backyard. What's that? Uh, it measures wind velocity, and it's connected to an app, which I took a screenshot here of, and it records the times literally once every hour on the bottom from eight in the morning that day to nine at night. Look at one to two to three miles an hour in the afternoon. You can tell it, it generally was not an overly breezy day. We were not expecting a storm. It wasn't one of those high wind events that happened even regionally in the area. This was a freak thing. I mean, you saw how windy it got there. And then take a look at this right here. I'm not sure if, if you can even see that dot, but these are the wind speeds between zero and five, maybe a couple tens. And this is over the span of, of a week, by the way. But here it is on that Easter Sunday. Look at that. Somewhere between 15 and 20 miles an hour. And that's just the one that was recorded. So it goes to show you, this was something different. This was something crazy. Was it something like wind shear? So you've got a pretty good idea of the extent of the damage to our house, which, by the way, we purchased in 2015. This roof was put on in the late 90s, maybe early 2000s, so about 15 to 20 years old. Um, these should have a lot longer lifespan than this. And again, even a wind event of 30, 40, maybe even 50 miles an hour should not have this type of damaging effect on such a huge part of the roof. And again, you can see tile pieces everywhere. This, this frustrated me, uh, not just because it happened, but as I'm about to share with you how it was not necessarily resolved via insurance. These pieces were, were everywhere. And I guess the fortunate side, like I said before, is that nobody was hurt, which very easily could have happened. Look at that piece right there. Imagine that falling on somebody. And again, look at the, the spread of what has fallen in our backyard. So didn't have any idea this was going to happen. There were no other indications that there was anything wrong with the roof or that I'd be picking up the pieces like that. So we obviously had it inspected for the, the sake of repair to try and figure out what to do next. And one of the things we found was that the nails for this tile roof, the ones that held the tiles in, which each way I want to say probably about five pounds a piece. You add all those up and you imagine the amount of weight sitting on, on top of the roof and able to fall. Each one of those tiles being held up by a nail that was only an inch and a quarter long. You can see what I'm talking about here as I zoom in specifically on this picture. That nail barely even holding the tile in place. And we know it's only an inch and a quarter. That, that tile itself is about three quarters of an inch thick. So not a lot of grip on the wood. But I also want to say this, I went back and pulled the permits for this, 
to make sure that it was done legally and appropriately the first time around, it absolutely was. Everything was signed off, the work, the inspection, and obviously our house had a sale, a pre-sale inspection too. So everything was done as it was supposed to be. I don't have anybody to blame in that regard. So the insurance company eventually informs me that because they know this and they also know there's new code in California, which definitely would not allow for a nail that short to be holding up roof tile pieces, that they can't cover me. They can't cover repairs. They can definitely not cover replacing the roof. And that's also a huge situation for me because now I'm looking at a tile roof all those different pieces up there, I know how short the nails are. I know it's only a matter of time if you repair this that others might fall. But in that same breath, how did we go almost 20 years? And whatever wind and weather conditions happened, there was nothing that brought any other tiles down. This is the very first time it happened. You saw how windy it was, abnormally windy, all out of nowhere. They asked me to to be able to prove that this was a weather and wind related incident. I could clearly show that it was, it wasn't me up there. It wasn't anything else that damaged it. I mean, you can clearly see nobody's in the backyard, how windy it was coincides perfectly, unfortunately with those, those tile pieces falling, but they wanted no part in helping me pay for fixing the roof or completely replacing it. And yes, that's ultimately what I had to do had to do, cost tens of thousands of dollars, but what other choice did I have? Thinking about just being in the backyard, the front yard, and knowing that any time the wind kicked up, that tile pieces could come off and, and gravely injure somebody was not going to take that chance at all. So yeah, sharing this story because even though everything was done properly and signed off and permits and inspections and insurance was was notified properly. I, I documented everything. It was clear as day that, that no humans were at fault here, uh, that my insurance company, which will remain nameless for the purpose of this video, did not want to partake at all, which was also a bit frustrating because at the beginning of this process, I made very clear what happened, didn't change my story one bit because there's really not much to it. I was very open and honest about everything, the inspections, the nail size that we found, which again was up to code when this roof was put on in the late 90s, but just didn't apply to the current code of new homes, which I totally understand. But what did you expect me to do? Replace all the nails, replace the roof to live up to code that would cause my insurance policy to actually cover this? It, it was mind-numbing. It was frustrating. It was a lot of money that I, I did not want to spend, but honestly had no other choice. So do I feel better now for, for sharing all this? I guess if I can help any one of you understand that if you're going through this right now, you're not alone. I encourage home ownership. I think it's a great, it's a great thing to have. It's a great journey to go down. Um, there's a lot of upsides to it, but I have to say, that this is one of the negative sides. You deal with some things that just are not going to be fair and are not going to make you very happy. So if I'm if I'm commiserating with you right now and you feel better because of this, it makes me feel better too.